right? And that's a loss coming through for ICICI Bank, and that's not what was being expected. Uh, we were uh, expecting a profit number of 1460 crore rupees, and uh, it's clearly the gross NP at 8.8 percent. I mean, these numbers are not something that we had anticipated. A loss of 120 crore versus a profit. Uh, this is in the uh, same quarter last year of over 2000 crore. It's uh, not something which were uh, which we were anticipating. Just let me quickly run you through the kind of provisioning numbers that the, the bank has put out 5971 crore that's the provision number uh, that uh, the bank has put out uh, I mean, uh, these are not uh, uh, numbers that we were anticipating at all. 8.81% uh, is the gross NPA versus 8.84, so that's uh, pretty much uh, stable. But at the, uh, when you're looking at the, um, the net, net NPA numbers, it's coming at 4.19 versus 4.77. Uh, something, um, you know, we'll have to do a slight bit of more research to find out what has really uh, gone wrong this time. Because the provisioning, although has uh, come down slightly, uh, but uh, now uh, joining us this is uh, Mayuresh Joshi. Mayuresh, um, it's coming as, at a loss uh, this time around for uh, ICICI Bank. This was not being uh, expected. Uh, you know, most analysts were expecting a uh, profit number to come through of around 1500 crore, and it's actually coming at a loss. What's your first take on the earnings? No, sales so that the bottom line is very, very surprising. So I think we'll have to uh, uh, check out uh, what were the exceptional that have got recorded in terms of the loss being reported. But on the uh, asset quality side, as I see it, uh, I think number is looking far more stable. Uh, so even on the GNPA front, uh, it is looking stable. Even on the net NPA front, it is looking stable. Uh, the loan growth, again, I think, uh, has been a tad bit below expectations. So at 6.7% on a YOY basis, 0.8 quarter on quarter, uh, a tad bit where we are probably assuming a 9 to 10% kind of loan growth. Uh, so yes, I think uh, need to probably have a look at the line by line item in terms of uh, the, any reported exceptionals uh, because of which the loss has got reported. Right, so I'm just going to run you through a few more numbers so we get a better idea of what's really uh, uh, transpired. Um, the uh, net interest income in the quarter was at 6,000 crore uh, and this is compared to 5,590 crore uh, in, the, uh, so in the same quarter last year. Uh, and overall uh, NIMs have come in at 3.2% uh, versus 3.23. So there's, that's also pretty much stable. Fee income growth has been of 16%. Uh, treasury income was at 766 crore rupees uh, in this quarter. Treasury income included gains of 1100 on the sale of shareholding in ICICI approved. So that's on the back of uh, that uh, divestment that had happened. Um, mark to market losses uh, aggregated uh, to around 220 crore rupees. And uh, the gross additions to the NPA were of 4036 crore lowest in the last uh, 11 quarters is also what they are saying. Uh, the consolidated profit uh, after tax was 5 crore. So on a consolidated basis, there is a, a small uh, profit number which has come through for the first quarter. Shefali? Uh, Shell, uh, so the reason uh, why the numbers are looking below expectations is because the bank has actually provided, uh, uh, the bank has actually made provisions for all uh, MTM losses uh, this time around in, in this particular quarter as well. So they have not used the RBI dispensation uh, to, to, you know, to uh, uh, to, to actually spread use, to spread them out over the next few quarters. So that is uh, one reason uh, that the numbers are looking uh, below expectations. So if we look at the other income figure, that has come uh, below expectation mainly because of the uh, same reason. So we have the other income Income number at uh, 3851 crore rupees versus uh, 5678 uh, crore rupees. Their operating expenses are almost uh, looking muted on a sequential basis. Their provisioning number has come in at uh, 59, uh, 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 5971 crore rupees. So that is uh, has gone up on a uh, on a YOY basis. So uh, uh, at the PBT level also they have a loss. So um, I'm sure these numbers would actually disappoint because nobody was expecting a loss to come in from. I mean yeah, but as you said, uh, so they have uh, provided for those MTM losses in one go right. instead of spreading them out and maybe the market gives it a slight bit of a maybe benefit, benefit, benefit of doubt. doubt. Mayuresh, yeah. what's your thought? Uh, the, what has really happened and now we know the reason for this loss number to come through instead of a profit is that the MTM losses, the RBI had allowed them to spread it out over a few quarters but they have clearly gone ahead and booked them in one quarter itself and hence this loss number coming through. Uh, how do you think the market will view it uh, come Monday morning? So. Unfortunately, I don't have the press release because I'm not in front of the PC right now. Right. But what you're probably uh, saying at this point of time that they have not used the dispensation window of four quarters and they have recognized it at one go. 
if if that is one possible reason in terms of uh, the exceptional loss that has got reported uh, this time around, I think the street might very well take it into its stride. Uh, the other element that I also wanted to put forth was uh, the absolute ratios uh, that one really talks about. Uh, so the net NPAs uh, on on percentage terms of what they have reported, the GNPs. Uh, the street was of the belief that uh, it would be a tad higher number coming on that front. And even on the provisioning front, uh, a lot of expectations were actually built in the provisioning can be uh, a tad bit on the higher side. But the provisioning figure is also quite reasonable. Uh, the loan growth, as I said, uh, is, is one number which uh, has uh, disappointed a tad bit because the expectations were largely that uh, an uh, 8 to 9 percent or the 9 to 10 percent loan growth leading to a 9 to 10 percent NIA growth. Uh, uh, so the NIAs have probably come uh, more or less in line with estimates. Uh, the loan growth a tad bit below expectations. Uh, but because of this exceptional um, recognition that they've done, I think the street, in my opinion, as you're pointing out, and if that's the case, uh, would largely take it in its stride. Uh, uh, Mayuresh, uh, hi, this is Shifali. So actually the uh, MTM losses that they've actually given in this quarter, it's just about uh, 218 crore rupees. So that can't have that much of an impact on the bottom line. So what they've actually done is they've made a provisioning of about 5,900 crore rupees, which I believe is much higher than expectations. We were just factoring in about 4,000 crores. So uh, I'm not sure what number you were factoring in. So going forward, do you see this uh, sort of a trend on provisioning continuing? Because the asset quality this time is, uh, is much better. So so uh, they've made a, a much higher provisioning in, uh, I mean, in in context of that. Uh, yeah, I think if, if that is the figure, uh, I think the provisioning that uh, ICIC had done in quarter four uh, was almost 6,626 odd crores. Uh, uh, in uh, Q1 last year, the provisioning figure was 2,600 odd crores. Uh, so if they provided uh, a, a tad bit of a higher amount, uh, I think that might be one of the reasons. Uh, and I think the entire recognition in terms of the watch list, uh, which stood on the books of March uh, 2008 at 4,728 crores, uh, uh, I think that might also have got probably recognized fully. Uh, so yes, I think this might be one of the probable reasons. Uh, but I think it's a healthy sign. So I think if they are uh, having a higher provisioning done and if the PCR probably uh, has expanded uh, because it stood at around 53.6, and if you're saying that the provisioning has been far higher, my own sense is that it might actually expand beyond 65% uh, as my calculations are just showing. So if that is the case, I think it is one healthy sign in terms of uh, actually having a significant amount of provisioning done, which would basically mean that in the quarters, ensuing quarters to come, the provisioning will be far lesser. So the elevation in credit cost that you might witness in this quarter can, ex can be expected to taper down, both in terms of the recognition that has probably happened from the stress book, as well as higher provisioning leading to better dynamics uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, the asset quality profile. And the other element in terms of the retail advance holding up should probably then support the leverage required on the balance sheet. Right. Many thanks for joining in, uh, Mayuresh. It's Mayuresh Joshi from Angel Broking giving his views. Now joining us is Lalitab Srivastav from Sher Khan. Uh, Lalitab, what do you make of these earnings? Uh, the provision coverage ratio is still at 66%. That's a good number, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Uh, provision coverage is something that uh, that uh, is keenly looked at. Uh, you know, this this quarter there has also been a, a, a gain by selling of uh, 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 shares in ICC and that would also be a reason because you know then generally uh, uh, banks take an uh, extra amount of uh, provisioning uh, to you know offset that. So that is one thing. I think, uh, you know, most parameters ICICI Bank performs very well in terms of, you know, uh, on, 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 on terms of uh, retail growth, uh, fee income has also been impressive for them. But I think, you know, uh, this uh, uh, net interest income uh, growth is, is, is kind of disappointing. Right. Uh, Lanta, I just want to understand this slightly better. There's been a recovery of 2,000 crore uh, as well in the first quarter, right? Uh, then there's been a uh, the gain on the back of the sale of shares in ICICI Pru. And uh, despite right. that, there is a loss. So can you uh, just break it down for us at the profit level? What has really happened and because of which there's been a loss this time? See, uh, uh, if, 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 if we... Uh, uh, include these, then there is also a, a significantly higher amount of provisioning that that has come this time uh, of around uh, 6,000 odd crores uh, that has come this quarter. Now that uh, uh, in Q4, you know, you understand because the slippages were pretty high. Uh, 
but this time you know the the high slippage at the high provisioning was i think uh, 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 was kind of an unexpected um uh, Lalitab, so the fresh slippages this time around are about uh, 4,000 uh, crore piece and the recoveries are 2,000 crore. So you think that this is an overall good asset quality? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, on, a, on a sequential basis, uh, is uh, an improvement. Uh, you know, uh, we expecting that uh, on, a, on, a, on a sequential basis, even though, you know, provi uh, the incremental slippages would be high but I think that should be a positive. Yeah, the so thing that has gone wrong is that provisions, we were anticipating the provisions to come in at f around 4000 crore rupees for this quarter. Uh, versus 6625 in the Q4 of last financial year. Uh, then, So basically we were anticipating them to come down by 2000 odd crore rupees. That's not happened. They pretty much stayed at those uh, uh, levels. Uh, so the provisions have come in at around 5971 crore uh, and, that's, uh, and that's probably the major reason as to why we have come down uh, to a loss at uh, the EBIT level and also at the uh, to be a reaction on you know earnings number but my sense is that uh, the uh, uh, what the management uh, says and how the management guides on you know uh, uh, the uh, developments uh, or rather the uh, way forward that would be interesting and that would be the key that is going to decide uh, how the stock reacts on monday operate operation wise and you know a lot of other metrics wise i say say bank sits much much better than you know a lot of other banks right uh, right even if you turns on if you talk on terms of capital adequacy if you talk about you know the recoveries and upgrades that have been there lower slippages uh, all those things are you know positives but uh, a management commentary would be something that we would be looking at. We'll be looking at definitely, uh, and uh, the, the the ADR which trades in the U.S. markets in the pre-opening session that's gone in and seen, an, uh, seen a fall of 1.6 percent. But that's the uh, immediate reaction. Uh, you know, as the U.S. markets open properly for trade, we'll have a proper reaction uh, to the kind of earnings which have really uh, been announced and we'll get a better picture. Uh, but uh, all in all, it seems to be that uh, the loss number has come through instead of a profit. The other metrics uh, don't look all that bad. Shifali. Uh, yes, so it's the higher provisioning. So uh, hopefully in the quarters to come, like you know, one of the analysts pointed out that they won't make that much of right. provisioning. So um, let's see how the stock reacts. Lalitab, uh, another question that I had uh, to ask you, we had seen Bank of Baroda earnings just come out, come out uh, uh, half an hour ago. And uh, again, they had gone in and uh, surprised the market with a big profit number of 500 crore. Uh, versus the uh, analyst estimates of anywhere between 150 to 200 crore. Uh, now clearly uh, ICICI Bank uh, is uh, much more expensive than most of the uh, other listed um, PSU banks. Do you think that uh, the that the favor may shift slightly more towards PSU banks now that you know Canada Bank numbers are good, Vijay Bank numbers are good, uh, Bank of Baroda numbers are good. Do you think that uh, the market will start looking at PSU banks now because the valuation gap is clearly very evident? Yeah, I think uh, at least with uh, Bank of Baroda numbers, the uh, uh, performance was very uh, uh, enthusiastic or uh, uh, positive, uh, so as to say. So I think uh, uh, the street is going to, you know, uh, give that benefit to some of the better and PSU banks uh, also on, uh, on incoming times. What's your current uh, call on the stock and price target that you have before the earnings? Now, clearly they will adjust the kind of earnings that have come through, but what is your current uh, view on the stock? See, uh, we had a buy on Bank of Baroda. Uh, our price target was 180 rupees. Uh, and uh, post today's uh, numbers uh, and uh, uh, the con call, we are going to you know uh, uh, decide on the fresh target. No, I also meant uh, on ICICI Bank. Okay, on ICICI Bank, uh, we had a hold rating. Uh, 
mainly because you know uh, 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 there were there were some issues on uh, the management uh, 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 transition that is happening. So we had a target of 310 rupees uh, with a hold uh, rating. Uh, now uh, we'll have to you know take a call on how uh, uh, we see things going forward. All right, Lalita. Many thanks for joining us and giving us your view. So Shifali, these are the earnings. ICICI Bank again, uh, big surprise coming through. Uh, again, Mayurosh and Lalita both, uh, you know, seem to say that if you look at the internal metrics, the uh, provision coverage ratio, the not net NPA, the gross NPA, not all that bad. It's just that uh, the provision numbers have come in much above what the seed was anticipating, hence thereby uh, leading to a loss and. You know, that's why it's not uh, looking all that great. And, um, you know, the yeah. interesting thing to see will be how the other private sector banks react. Even though the ICICI bank was in a different zone altogether from past couple of weeks, but still, you know, like we are seeing the impact of one PSU bank earning on the others, you know, all yeah. of them have been doing pretty well. Right, so, so, but for, I, I mean, we, we'll get to see how the other private sector banks so react. So, if you look at the other banks till now, if you look at a Yes Bank or an Indescent Bank, mm -hmm. uh, their earnings were clearly very, very strong. Uh, there had been that impact of that MTM, uh, MTM coming through, but even here there was no loss number coming, uh, yes. you know, uh, and uh, we had just seen Yes Bank earnings as well uh, just yesterday, very strong set of numbers coming through. Uh, even a similar picture with HDFC Bank as well, 19% uh, right. kind of a growth. Uh, so uh, on all these, um, the, you know, the, it's very difficult to draw a parallel from the numbers of ICICI Bank to other uh, private sector banks, I would suppose, but uh, you know that uh, pretty much uh, plays out when you're looking at PSUs because we've seen that uh, there, are, there are three PSUs which have gone in and declared strong right. numbers, whereas on the private side we have had three banks with strong numbers and ICICI Bank with a slight bit of uh, weak numbers uh, and uh, you know the ADR is already reacting in the US market. So it'll be interesting to see how this stock opens uh, in trade on Monday, but uh, for the moment uh, we'll, uh, we'll just close this show and come back to you with uh, more results. The big one, Reliance Industries, uh, will be announcing its uh, earnings over the next one, one and a half hours. It will be interesting to see how that one really goes.